they do not sin. Think about that as we continue. And here it says, Be not deceived, he that doeth righteousness is righteous. So what it's saying here is that our good works is how we become righteous, correct? But as we read to start out, for our regeneration today, Titus says it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, but by his mercy he saved us. But for these people under the law, they had to do good works, didn't they? To prove their righteousness. It gets worse. It gets worse. He that he that committed sin is of the devil. How many of us in here commit sins? I'll be, I'll be the first to raise my hand. Okay? For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God, remember in John chapter 3, verse 8, born of the Spirit, born again. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin. Because he is what? Born of God. Do these verses apply to any of us today that claim to be born of, born again? Born from above? Born of God? Because if you were born if you were born again, what do these scriptures say you can't do? You can't sin. But if you do sin, you're a child of who? <laughs> but don't, don't the scriptures say that we're children of God by faith in Christ Jesus? See, that's where 2 Timothy 2.15 comes in. About rightly dividing the word of truth. See, because what, what God said to the nation of Israel is true. Because they were promised the Holy Ghost, weren't they? On the day of Pentecost. Uh, Luke chapter 24 verse 49 said that they will receive power from on high. And then here we're in 1 John. Go to chapter 2 verse 20. It says, But you have an unction from the Holy One, and ye know all things. Uh, verse 27. It says, But the anointing which you have received of Him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but the same anointing teacheth you all things that is truth and no lie, even as it is, it hath taught you, you shall abide in Him. See, these people, that Holy Spirit empowerment on the day of Pentecost, applied to these people that were born again. That were going to go through the tribulation period. They had the power from on high, and because they had that power on high, what couldn't they do if you were born again? You couldn't sin. And if you do sin, you're a child of who? The devil. You see why I say we don't want to be born again? Two reasons we don't want to be born again. Number one, we'd be born back into Adam. And number two, we'd be a child of the devil. Because I don't know anybody that doesn't sin, including myself. So, we look at this word regeneration. It means the act of producing new. See, when we trust the death, burial, and resurrection, we become a brand new creation. 2 Corinthians 5.17 For he who is in Christ is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. Okay? We're something brand new. That's our regeneration. But the regeneration for the nation of Israel... Uh, which is prophecy, which was spoken of since the world began, their regeneration is this kingdom. This kingdom, which was promised to them, not to us. We're going to be raptured out of here when the Lord comes back. We're going to be ruling and reigning with Christ from heaven. Okay? So, we see the similarities of being born again 
and our regeneration. They were promised eternal life, weren't they? We're promised eternal life. The Holy Spirit is what gives them life. And we're going to see next week the Holy Spirit is what gives us life. Uh, they passed, John chapter 5 verse 24 says that they passed from death, spiritual death, unto life. We do the same thing. Okay? Our spirit's been quickened. Similarities, but different. So, the reason I brought this in this manner this week, uh, we had to go through all that other stuff to get to this point. But, people say, well, we can be born again. We just use that phrase, we're born again. No, we're not. And hopefully we see the point that we don't want to be born again. And what happens is, that's why the blender is here. We take promises to the nation of Israel about their eternal life. We take promises of our eternal life, the body of Christ, and we put them in there. And we turn it on high. And then what we do is we serve smoothies out. And we wonder why there's so much confusion in the church today. The church is sick because we're mixing law and grace. We're mixing prophecy and mystery. That's why we have to rightly divide. Um, again, next week, we're going to look at our regeneration. How do we get saved? What does a person have to do to gain eternal life today in 2014? Do they have to believe that Jesus is the Messiah? Uh, get baptized. Do we have to get baptized? And, uh, and accept uh, accept God your Lord and Savior or something like that. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about that, okay? This is what the Scriptures say a person needs to do to be saved. Go to 1 Corinthians 15. Okay? 1 Corinthians 15. Page 991. Nine hundred ninety-one. We've seen today that a person, in order to be born again, had to believe who the Messiah was. They had to believe in His name, right? But now, uh, keep your, just keep your finger there for a second, okay? Don't don't go with me. I just want to read these verses. I'm going to read these verses because this is where we started out in Titus, okay? Remember. Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, the knowledge and the truth which is after godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. We've seen that. The nation of Israel was promised eternal life. We're promised eternal life. Verse 3. But had in due times, due times, see the due times is for us today. It's different than the promise of eternal life to Israel. And for us today, what we have to believe to gain eternal life, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Look what verse 2 says. By which also ye are saved. Okay? By which you are saved. If you keep your memory which I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For how I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again according to the Scriptures. He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Folks, this is what we have to believe today to be saved. What our Messiah did for us. He died, was buried, and he rose again. No water baptism. But for the nation of Israel, what did they have to do? They had to be water baptized. If they didn't get water baptized, they didn't have remission of sin, they didn't have eternal life. They didn't get the gift of the Holy Ghost. But for us today, the moment we trust the gospel of our salvation, we're sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Similarities, but different. Okay? And that's why it's important that we rightly divide the word of truth. We can't go applying the promises that God made to Israel to us. 
because all it does is causes confusion and gives indigestion. So, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of eternal life. We thank you that it was promised before the world began. And Lord, that promise is for us today. It was also to the nation of Israel. I pray that you use this message uh, to your glory and help clear up some confusion. We thank you. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen.